Artists occasionally experience a sense of stagnation, a block. This isn't because the flow of creativity has stopped. It can't. This generative energy is ceaseless. It may just be that we are choosing not to engage with it. And that little excerpt from Rick Rubin's new book puts into words exactly how I've been feeling about my camera kit. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I ended up buying the new Leica Deluxe 8. I've had it for about a week. So here are my thoughts and first impressions on this camera. All right, so before we talk about the camera, I just wanted to address two things very quickly. Now I know buying a new camera isn't going to automatically make me a better photographer. But for example, when you give an, a painter a new brush, a different brush size, a different brush shape, it'll allow them to think differently and try different things. And for me, having this camera with me every single day will force me or hopefully allow me to take more photos, put in the reps, and if we practice more, hopefully we get better, right? Hopefully it'll hone my skills, hone my eye to be able to see different scenes and different photographs. And the second thing that I quickly wanted to mention is that when this camera came out, a lot of people were super excited. And then, like always, there were a lot of people that were very angry for whatever reason and i get it a lot of them were saying how the sensor is older the lens is older but i recently saw a video from manny ortiz and he kind of put it um perfectly he put he and i'm paraphrasing him here but he basically said that cameras have reached sort of technical innovation four five six seven years ago and so it's a little bit stagnant right now but what they're doing a lot of camera manufacturers is they're taking all the latest um, tech and innovation from their higher end models and trickling them down to other models and so i think at the end of the day there's gonna be people who um, hate on cameras no matter what like the fuji x100 also has a lens that has been trickled down and so Really, the big thing that Manny was saying is the end user experience, that refinement, that tweaking. And I think that's what this camera is. It's been tweaked and refined. And from my first impressions, and we'll dive into that next, the user experience is really, really good. Let's kind of go through the camera. First off, let's start with the build. Now, as a refinement and as a trickle down, they're calling this the Baby Q because it looks a lot like the Leica Q3. And I actually think it looks really beautiful. The body is a full magnesium die cast and the build just feels extremely nice in the hands. And what they did with this version is that they sort of stripped the camera down and sort of went to the essentials. They've always sort of done um, a minimalist camera, but they have really started to go in that direction with all their cameras lately. There is the shutter speed dial on top. You have the shutter release with the zoom rocker. And then you have the thumb wheel right here, which is super tactile and a button in the center. There's two buttons in the back. And now what's great is the thumb wheel, these two buttons and this button on top can be customized as well as the center button on the D-pad. And what I love about that is essentially gives you four buttons and a thumb wheel to customize your camera. So I think any person can set this camera up exactly to what they need. What I love even more is when you long press the button, it pulls up the customization menu and it gives you the options. Unlike what I'm used to, which is 
with the Sony cameras, you really have to dig through the menus, and we'll get that into a second. But most people who have used Sony cameras or have dived into Sony cameras know that those menus are very, very overwhelming, and most people would even consider them quite messy. The D-pad is your typical directional pad, and then you are led to the play button and the menu button. Next, we're gonna power on the camera. It literally takes a few seconds to come on and you're ready to shoot. And let's just talk a little bit about the menu system here. So, all right, so it's pretty straightforward. You hit the menu button once and it pulls up this quick splash screen. And what I love about it, it has everything you need. It's super simplistic. You hit the menu button again and it pulls you into this super beautiful menu, super easy. Hit the menu button to jump through pages and the D-pad to pick the line item. What I really, really like about the menu is you can hit this and the screen changes so you know that you're in video mode. There's no mistake there. And I've also customized the button so that you can jump back and forth between photo and video while you're shooting. So the menu is super simple and really incredible, super easy to use. Considering I used Sony cameras for over 10 years, this one made me feel like I've been using it for just as long, even though I haven't. That's how sometimes convoluted the Sony menus can be. They've made a lot of changes and a lot of fixes to make it better, but because Sony cameras can be so customizable, at the same time, it can be, like I said, many, many times, super overwhelming to sort of the casual user as well. Now, the screen itself isn't a flip out screen. This thing is 1.8 million dots. It matches the Q3 and it's just got really great clarity, really great, really great color and decent brightness. The EVF is 2.3 or 2.4 million dots, not quite as good as my Sony a7 IV, but it's good enough. It's really bright and it shoots at, um, it displays at, sorry, 60 frames per second. So I've had no issues with it. Really, really nice. Let's talk video specs. It can do 4K at 24 frames and 4K at 30 frames per second. Granted, it's only 8-bit, 420 for all of it. So you're not going to be pushing the colors too hard on this camera, but it can shoot 1080p 60 if you do need that. Again, not really um, meant for video, but if you do need to get, I don't know, like some postcard styles or some, some still clip standing static clips here and there for maybe a travel film or something, um, it could work. So this little area that we're in is super dope because there's Fotografiska, I've talked about it before. It's the photo museum in Berlin and the building is super cool. Like if you look at this building, it's uh, super historic. It was used during the war for war purposes, and then it became an art museum, and then it was shut down, and then now it's been uh, reopened as this really uh, epic uh, photo museum. So, super great place to be shooting this video, by the way. As we're shooting this video here, Kat and I suddenly got super hungry, so, Let's go to one of the best pizza places in all of Berlin. Um, it happens to be in the same area. So if you're in Berlin, come to Magic John's for pizza and visit Fotografiska because it is a really, really great place to spend some time in Berlin. Uh. 
Okay, this your cue. Everybody get up. Killing it. In other words, we gon' liven it up. Everybody on the same page. Huh. Same wave nowadays. We don't ride them enough. Get it? You can feel it in the air. They all wanna know who, what, when, and where. Players on the right, ladies on the left. I'm too smooth. He like, say it with your chest. I'ma keep shining like a star in the night sky. Mean with the flow. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Might have fooled me once, never twice. All right, so sort of the last point that I'll go through on this sort of first impressions is the main reason why I think a lot of people are going to buy this camera, which is to take photos. The lens is a 24 to 75, 35 millimeter equivalent. It is uh, powered by this zoom rocker and it's quite slow, as you can see. I've never been a fan of these sort of telescoping lenses. So it's something that I'm actually not a big fan of from the get go, but it is what it is. The aperture is a f1.7 to 2.8 variable aperture, and it is very nice and clicky. It feels very tactile, just like the buttons. Like honestly, these buttons are just so clicky. It feels so nice. And also the shutter, I, I'll go back to the shutter. The shutter is a leaf shutter, so it just has a really nice sound when you're shooting. It just, I don't know, sounds really nice and elegant. The zoom ring is super smooth and it has carried over the aspect ratio selector, which is super cool. So as far as the sensor goes, it is a 21 megapixel sensor, but the effective pixels that you're getting when you're shooting because of the way the lens is sitting on the sensor is 17 megapixels. So at the four by three, you're getting 17. And then at the very lowest, which is uh, I think the 16 by nine, you're going to get about 15 megapixels. Now, a lot of people are going to complain about that too, but I'm not really a megapixels person, so I don't really care. I've shot photos with the A7S III. I've done videos on, on my channel about the A7S III and shooting photos, and that camera's only 12 megapixels. And when I put it up against the 24 megapixels and 33 megapixels of the A7 III and A7 IV, people could hardly tell. So for social media purposes, not even a big deal. You might be able to blow it up somewhat big if you need to. Um, but yeah, non-issue for me. And then you have the autofocus selector here, which is cool because you also have the macro functions if you want to get some cool macro shots. So that was just like a super quick run through of the camera and a little bit of photography. As I mentioned, I've only had it for about a week, but I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'll quickly mention the things that I like and the things that I can tell already that I'm not so sure about. Again, the build, really, really great. I talked about the sensor, but I uh, didn't mention in that part that the camera now shoots DNG RAW, which is way better than what the old version was shooting, which is a weird pri proprietary RAW, I think. The DNGs are really nice to work with so far. The colors are beautiful. Um, the Photos app. The Photos app is super excellent because it can transfer those RAWs. It can transfer the JPEGs, it can transfer the videos, and it just connects seamlessly and stupid fast. So the Leica Photos app, really, really great. Um, I like the touchscreen on the back of the camera. It's, 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 you know, it's sensitive enough, it's accurate enough. I like how you can stretch the focusing zone with your thumbs. Um, the face detect works okay so far. Obviously, the autofocus system is something that uh, is not going to be anywhere near as good as my Sony camera, but this camera isn't that. This camera is meant to be used differently. It's meant to slow you down a bit. It's meant for you to be a little bit more intentional with your photography, and I think that's a good thing. The things that I think they could change and hopefully they can make even better things that a lot of people maybe don't like right out of the box is that the zoom of the lens as you saw before is extremely slow so you're not going to be able to zoom in and out of focal lengths really fast um 
I wish you could program this ring so that you could jump between the different focal lengths really fast. They had that in the old version and I'm not sure really why they took it away. The camera right now also doesn't have the Leica looks, but from what I heard, some people are okay with it. Some people aren't even that impressed with it. Um, but again, I hope those are things that they can hopefully update in future firmware updates. So we were trying to wrap up this video and finding a quiet enough spot so I can give a nice ending and usually those are the most challenging parts. But the area that we're in, we just remembered that every Thursday they're doing free open air concerts, DJ sets, mm -hmm. mini raves, yeah. I don't know, but we can hear the music and it's actually at a really cool location which is the Hamburger Bahnhof. And back in the day it was the main train station where you could take trains that would take you north and south of Germany because the main train station only took you east and west. But now it's no longer being used. The main train station is the main train station. It takes you everywhere. And this one is now a museum and again, arts and culture center. So I can hear the music. It sounds actually pretty intense, but this will probably give us a little bit of an opportunity to get some photos there. Um, the light's a little bit lower, so we'll see how low light photos are coming out of this little camera. And so for as little time as I've had with this camera, I've just been having so much fun using it. So much so that I'm considering bringing only this camera as my main camera, the Osmo Pocket 3 and the DJI Mini 3 Pro on our Andalusia road trip where we're gonna make three to four episodes of a little travel docu-series and is that crazy? Maybe, but I am up for a challenge and I'm excited to leave my huge camera and my huge lenses at home to save my back. So if you want to see how that transpires and all the photos and footage that's coming out from this camera, then subscribe to the channel because we are going to be starting to film in a couple weeks here. So very excited about that. And I hope you enjoyed this first thoughts and impressions of the Leica Deluxe 8. And we'll end it here. We'll catch you in the next one. And as always, live passionately and stay inspired.